Who doesn't occasionally need a shot of liquid courage to get them through difficult times? I know I need to see off half a bottle of rye to work with Adam Pacitti. He's really grabby and he keeps trying to show me his special prize. A day at the office will always be a grind and even actors, the most long-suffering of all of God's precious creatures, sometimes need a stiff one to help them through a tricky scene. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 actors who had to get drunk to shoot their movies. Drinks around the house. Number 10, Anna Kendrick and Olivia Wilde, Drinking Buddies. The director of this film literally organised a piss up in a brewery. Drinking Buddies is an improvised movie about beer, love, beer, friendship, beer, heartbreak and sometimes cider. It's an independent film set in a craft brewery which sounds like tedious hips division 101 but it's sweet and boasts a scene where Anna Kendrick, who's an adorable sparrow in human form, and Olivia Wilde, who's also a very nice lady, got full drunk pretty much throughout. Because they were shooting in a brewery, all the beer was free and very, very real. Kendrick was especially gone in the scene where she played and repeatedly lost a drinking game to co-star Jake Johnson. Number 9, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf, Lawless. Shia LaBeouf is a hipster beard in human form, a swaggering artist of a man who's doing art and the art he is doing is very important art. So important is the acting that Shia does that he actually prefers not to do the acting and for his role in bootlegging film Lawless was frequently aggressively drunk on moonshine to get into character and to achieve that wasted, bloated, drunk look, which is helpful because makeup artists haven't been in invented yet. Commodity. The quality is what it's gotta be, and my philosophy is much farther than what you're asking. Being forced to spend a lot of time with pissed Shia LaBeouf is a big ask for a person, so much so that he and Tom Hardy got into a physical altercation on set, and Mia Wasikowska, 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 Wally Fister, her, basically, who played his love interest, actually tried to quit the film, calling a lawyer and telling him to get her as far away from Shia as humanly possible. Do it! Number 8, Margot Robbie, Wolf of Wall Street. To be honest, considering that Martin Scorsese's Wolf of Wall Street was a Ron Perlman's house party of coke, quaaludes and booze, I would be legit flabbergasted if there wasn't any boozing on set. However, here's the one I know about. Margot Robbie was a relative newcomer compared to DiCaprio, her on-screen partner, and for that infamous nude scene, the first in her career, she's confessed that she needed to take three tequila shots in a row before filming to calm her nerves, appearing before Leo because, yeah, he's the intimidatingly beautiful one in this scenario. Number 7, Brad Pitt and Ed Norton, Fight Club. On to another anarchic soapstorm of a movie. Fight Club is what the IMDb trivia page was made for. There are so many weird little facts about making this movie, from offended extras storming off set to the fact that there's a cup of coffee hidden in every scene, to Pitt visiting a dentist to have his front tooth purposefully chipped, to weird fine print that can be found hidden on the DVD. After all of that, it feels like stating the obvious to say that Norton and Pitt got drunk to film a scene in which they were supposed to be drunk. The scene in question is the one where the two leads are intoxicated and hitting golf balls off a verge. Fincher apparently saw the two men doing it in their downtime, hitting golf balls into a catering truck, and put this scene in the film, getting both actors thoroughly liquored beforehand. Number 6, Natalie Portman and Mila Kunis, Black Swan. Black Swan is a movie about how messed up ballet is and is also 60 times better than that sounds. As Natalie Portman's life is unraveling, or should I say, swan raveling, no, I shouldn't. She goes out for a bender with Mila Kunis before Swanda taking in some inter BFF kiss play. The director, Darren Aronofsky, claims that both actors were nervous about shooting the scene, and to prevent this from becoming a swan going problem, they split a bottle of tequila between them. Since, Kunis has come out to publicly squash these, in her view, swan substantiated rumours, but The Hollywood Reporter claims an on set source confirms that they were swan toxicated. That one didn't even work. Number 5, Neve Campbell, Denise Richards, and Matt Dillon, Wild Things. Tequila makes an otherwise uncomfortable sexual experience possible, just ask your parents. But unlike Kunis in Black Swan, the actors in Wild Things have no qualms about admitting they had a few shots before filming the famous threesome scene. I'd elaborate, but you know exactly the scene I'm talking about. You know exactly the scene I'm talking about. Your mother is deeply disappointed in you. You used to be her little boy, her little lad. Her Hmm, I may be projecting here. Moving on. Number four, Billy Bob Thornton, Bad Santa. Bad Santa is technically a Christmas movie, only as much as a bun filled with Beatles is technically a sandwich. A nasty, greasy, and deeply funny movie about Billy Bob Thornton and all the terrible things he says and does whilst dressed as a mouldy Kringle. Old Billy Bob even told Film 4 in an interview that he was, at times, genuinely wasted in the movie. In his own words, if you're gonna be playing a guy like this, you can't be sort of drunk, you know? And I wasn't sort of drunk. Fun fact, the Coen brothers who exec produced the film and tweaked the script, thought the addition of the sentimental scene at the end made the movie, in their own words, a piece of s h i t. Number three, Apocalypse Now. Speaking of pieces of I'm kidding, I'm kidding, put your keyboards away. Apocalypse Now is a masterpiece, but it nearly destroyed everyone who worked on it. It was plagued with problems, including Martin Sheen having a heart attack and Francis Ford Coppola, most famous for directing Jack, losing £100 during the shoot. £100 in weight, I mean, not money. The film lost way more than that. This film is a $20 million disaster. Why won't anyone believe me? 
It also featured a drunken President Bartlett. During the infamous opening sequence in the hotel room, Martin Sheen got actually drunk and Coppola filmed it. Sozzled Sheen got nearly naked, punched a mirror, which cut him, he cried, and then, bleeding, tried to attack Coppola off camera. All but one of those things ended up in the film. Number two, Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo, Super Mario Brothers. To be fair, if I was a Hollywood star, and it's never too late, guys, I've got the teeth for it, then the amount of booze you'd have to pump into me to agree to be in Super Mario Brothers would probably end up killing me. After all, it's the film that has Mario wear this mustard-coloured number, has Cooper say, you know what they say about little girls, don't you? They never forget their first kiss from a lizard. And also it confirmed that Mario's surname was Mario. It's Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. For God's sake. Both Hoskins and Luigi Amo soon realised that the movie they were in was going to be a monster turd. Around the time when Hoskins broke his finger, was electrocuted and nearly drowned in on-set accidents. Fun fact, he told The Guardian in an interview that making the film was his worst professional experience. Ha ha ha, Mario. In an attempt to escape the drudgery, Bob and John started drinking heavily between takes and I can't blame them. Number one, Fred Astaire, Holiday Inn. Time for some classic drinking now to round off the list. Holiday Inn is the movie from 1942 that's today most famous for giving the world the song White Christmas. It also has a blackface routine, but <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> it stars Bing Crosby and Fred Astaire and is set in Holiday Inn. The Holiday Inn, not one of these awful ones. During a New Year's Eve party, Fred Astaire is scripted to be drunk and do an inebriated comedy dance number. Before filming started, Astaire had two shots of bourbon. Well, that's not very much though, is it? Well, the first date wasn't quite right, and so they did another. But before that, Astaire had another shot. It wasn't quite right again, so they reset, and Astaire had yet another. They ended up filming seven takes. Poor Fred. Most sobering of all, even with eight shots of bourbon under his belt, Freddy's still the best dancer there is, the best dancer there was, and the best dancer there ever will be. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com, and I'll see you soon.